Welcome to Honors Geometry Lesson 6.2 where we use ratios and proportions with geometric figures and talk about scale factors. So before we move on with some properties um, I, have to I have to give you a, a couple of terms. Alright, let me write a proportion. Are you ready? I'm not because I don't have my uh, pen selected. Alright, now I'm ready. Let's see here. We're going to make 3 over 6 equals 7.5 over 15. Alrighty. That is a true proportion. Another way of writing that would be using colons 3 to 6 equals 7.5 to 15. All right, the reason I write that is because I need to introduce a couple of terms. The 3 and the 15, those are called the extremes. The reason they're called the extremes is when you write the proportion this way, they're on the outside. So what do you call these two in the middle? Well, that kind of makes sense with another term that we've learned in other parts of uh, mathematics. These are called the means. The two in the middle are the means. So this is the first term in a proportion. This is the second term. This is the third term. And this right here is the fourth term. So the first and the fourth terms are the extremes. The second and the third terms, those are the means. Okay, you just needed to know that for one of the properties which is coming up right now. Okay, the first property is the reciprocal property. If two ratios are equal, then the reciprocals are equal. All right, so let's see how this works here. 10 over 5 equals 8 over 4. That's definitely a true proportion. They reduce down to 2 over 1 equals 2 over 1. Well, the reciprocals are also equal to each other. 5 over 10 sorry, equals 4 over 8. 1 half equals 1 half. Let's go on to the next property. That is, switch the means property. That's the second and third terms in that proportion. If you interchange the means of a proportion, then you form another true proportion. Let's go have a look at that one. 10 over 5 equals 8 over 4. Well, you can switch the second and third terms. 10 over 8 equals 5 over 4. Both of those reduce down to 5 over 4. It is another true proportion. Let's go back and look at the fourth property again. Alright, property four. Add, denomina denom add denominators property. If you add the denominator to the numerator, then you form another true proportion. Let's go ahead and see how that one works. 10 over 5 equals 8 over 4. Well, 10 plus 5 over 5, I added the numerator to the denominator. Sorry, I added the denominator to the numerator. Equals 8 plus 4 over 4. I again added the denominator to the numerator. That would be 15 over 5, 3 over 1. 12 over 4, 3 over 1. It makes another true proportion. It's cool how these properties work. And I know you're asking, hey, well, this is property 2, and this is property three and property four. What was property number one? That was the cross products property which we learned from uh, lesson 6.1. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to how we're going to use proportions in geometric figures. Okay, right now since we don't know anything about similarity, we haven't gotten there yet you're going to be given a proportion like JL over LK equals JM over MN and you're going to be asked to find how big JL is. So with this it's really simple. All you're going to do is going to replace 
<coughs> substitute in numbers as you need to into that proportion. Are you ready? JL is what you're trying to find. So JL over LK. How big is LK? LK is 2. Equals, how big is JM? That's right, it's 15. Over MN, which is 5. So cross products says 5 JLs equals 30. So JL has to be 6. That is how you're going to use proportions with geometric figures. And now we're going to move on to scale drawings and scale factors and uh, how to convert um, distances and sizes of things. All right, here we go. What you have here is a nice little picture, a map quest picture with two stars on it. This is a US 10 going across basically uh, east to west or west to east along uh, both Lake and Mason counties in Michigan. This first star right here in the bottom is where my wife grew up. This second star right here is where my grandparents had a cottage at the same time that my wife lived here. So the question is, at some points we were about how many miles away from each other? So if you look at my ruler, two inches is 5,000 feet. Again, two inches, 5,000 feet. So we have to write, we're going to write, that's the scale factor. Two inches over 5,000 feet. And when you write a ratio like this, you always want to do the scale model over reality. Reality almost always goes in the denominator. All right, now we're going to actually measure and see how far apart those are in inches on this map. All right, here we go. From zero, it looks like it's eight and a half. So that's eight and a half inches. So we are going to put equals 8.5 over x. How many feet is that? So you're going to cross multiply. 2x equals, can I do this in my head? I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. 43. 42,500 and then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 2,100 250 and that's feet now let's find out how many miles that is by dividing that number by 5,280 hold on a minute I gotta go get a calculator alright so I just divided out on a calculator and to the nearest hundredth of a foot, sorry, hundredth of a mile, 4.02 miles. So that means there were times when we were growing up, didn't know each other, had no clue, that we were no farther than 4.02 miles away from each other. And we're guessing that there were times when my grandfather brought me into town in Baldwin to get a Jonesy's ice cream. If you've ever been to Baldwin, you know what I'm talking about and that she would have piano lessons in Baldwin on Saturday morning. So it's very possible that we're, we were in the same town, maybe only a couple hundred feet away from each other. I just think that's astounding. Anyway, that's how you use the scale factor. Uh, the scale model over reality, and then the scale model was 8.5 over the reality, uh, 4,200, 4, 42,500. All right, let's look at one more scale factor uh, example, and I think we'll be done with this section. All right, here we have a beautiful picture of uh, the world's biggest bat. It is in downtown Louisville. 
It's a Louisville Slugger. It's a model of uh, George Herman Ruth's bat, as you can read. It's made of steel, weighs 68,000 pounds, and stands 120 feet tall. The big bat is an exact replica of uh, Babe's Ruth's 34 inch Louisville Slugger. So, what is the diameter right here? What is the diameter of this barrel in real life? So, actually, that's the model. That's pretty weird. So, the model is 120 feet, and the real life bat was 34 inches. Now, if his real life bat had a diameter of 12.75, what is the diameter of this barrel? in the model. So you're going to cross multiply and divide. I'm going to pause it again. I don't think I can multiply that in my... Okay, when I cross multiply I get 330 equals 34x. Divide both sides by 34. It looks like it's just under 10. It is approximately 9 point seven one feet across that bat in real life. Well, that model. That's huge. This will conclude Honors Geometry 6.1 Ratios and Proportions with Geometric Figures and Scale Factors.